Well, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Ron Oberstein, president of Life Chiropractic College West. And I want to welcome you to another edition of our Life West Leadership Line. Today, I have a, a good friend. I've known her for 30 something odd years, and she's been she's a great chiropractor down in South Florida, Pompano Beach, Dr. Paula Hedgelin. Paula, welcome to the Life West Leadership Line. Thank you. I'm very honored. Very honored. <laughs> Well, we're, I'm so thrilled to have you. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Dr. Paula. If you don't know her or haven't heard about her, Dr. Paula graduated in 1985 from Life Chiropractic College. Um, she spent a year in 1986 doing an associateship in Georgia. And then in 1987, she went right down to uh, to Atlanta. And I'm sorry, she graduated in 85, 86, then 88, went down to Atlanta, down to uh, uh, Pompano Beach, and she's been there ever since. Uh, 33 years, 36 years of chiropractor, 33 years in practice, that beautiful number, and has had a just a phenomenal practice, which we're going to get into and talk about. She also served 10 years on the Florida Chiropractic Society board. She's lectured all over the globe. She's been in Europe, Spain, Germany, different places, and, and uh, served all over the world. Uh, she speaks regularly on the DE platform, the Dynamic Essentials platform, and she's just doing amazing things in, in, uh, in chiropractic and also just in life, because that's even bigger than chiropractic, because uh, nothing is bigger than life. So let's jump into it. Paula, welcome. I'm so thrilled to have you. We're going to get back into this discussion. It's, it's Veterans Day today. Oh, yes, it is. There you go. Veterans thank Day. You all the people that serve this country. Yep. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. I mean, it's so it's it most important. Let's jump into that. Let's talk about service. You know, um, we are in a service day today. I mean, my gosh, we're talking about, you know, people who serve people who who could have given their lives and those that did give their lives for us to have the freedom that we have right now. And it's so important to honor them. So, um, well, we will honor them today. Uh, um, but talk about service in your life. Like how does service show up? And what do you, you know, what well, happens as, in you when I say service? Okay. As a chiropractor, service means I'm serving the people in the practice, but I'm serving the higher power, God, whatever you want to say, to allow and be the chiropractor to connect people physically to spiritually. And we're serving that every single day, but not only just with the adjustment. We serve on speaking. We serve on going to different mission trips. Um, we went to Panama, we're serving people where you keep just taking people, care of people in the jails and the hospitals, everywhere. And it's kind of like, you feel like you're this person that I just cried the whole time because you're just doing what you love. You know, if you really love chiropractic and love the passion of chiropractic and you see all the miracles in the life, when you serve people, you not only, you know, not only in your office, but your home too, you have to serve at home. And this is a month for um, Thanksgiving. We serve the homeless. We go and serve food on Thanksgiving morning. I did that when my daughter was little. And um, we still do that now. We collect food. But serving is part of giving. Unconditionally, though, you don't serve people to get something back. You serve people to do it as, as a gift for God because you are doing, you're reporting for duty. And I even serve some of the CAs. I mean, so... We go in there, you have to have that service mentality. And you know what it is? Even if you have an emotional stress, if you have a challenge in your family life, in your health life, in your whatever part, or you have a death in, this, in a family, they always said, serve your way out of it. Serve your way. Give, 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 and serve. And that's part of the service I want to talk about. Yeah. You know, there's a book. Uh, there isn't a book. I think we ought to write a book or someone should write a book. Say the way out is through service. And the way in is through service because service brings us more inside, you know, and you just said it, you know, when people have issues and they have problems, the best thing to do is just serve your way out of it. Don't think your way out of it. You to get clear. This just gets us in trouble. It just spins and spins and spins. You know, the, 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 the term, you, you know, they, they spun out, you know, it's like, just get out and serve, get out of yourself. And, you know, when you talk about that, like on your service trips that you went to, you know, it's kind of getting beyond yourself, right? You know, right. You, you said something earlier, you talk about, you know, you've got to love chiropractic. And 
you know, there's a lot of people and there's no judgment here. There's people getting the chiropractic for different reasons or even find themselves in practice for different reasons at different times. They could be in a service mode right now and all of a sudden somebody hits financially and then they start thinking about going in on a financial level, right? And then they might start thinking about doing it on a different, whatever it might be, you know, but beyond all of that, it's always on the inside, right? It's all about the in the heart. I mean, you think of, think of Mother Teresa. She served people on their deathbed. She carried people with, um, she didn't want them dying in the street and didn't matter what disease they had, she took care of them. I mean, I'm not saying that we need to be like that. I'm just saying that look what people can do and look what they've done for people to give them hope and to raise their vibration, raise their whole spiritual, not only physical, but spiritual being, raises their vibration, and it is inside out. It is inside. Yeah. So you have to go inside to do that and really own it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just spoke, uh, I don't know, two days ago um, to the first quarter class I teach. Like a, a, I, do, I do two classes, not courses, but two classes with the first quarter. One is on chiropractic history. The other is on professionalism. But in the chiropractic history class, I told them about Fred Barge, you know, and what Fred Barge used to say, the one thing the one thing to never take away from a patient is hope is hope, you know, cause it's been taken away all their lives, right. You know, all their lives. We're not going to give you false hope and say, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. That whatever is going to go away. Cause we don't know that. But what we do know is that there's a power, there's an intelligence in the body and you know, that you have the ability to heal what that's, be- that's not between me and you. That's between you and, you know, whatever source you look up to. Right. And that intelligence never sleeps. Never, never sleeps. Isn't it it's crazy? Awesome. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just like, you know, when people really get it, I'm not, you know, you know, you're 36 years out and I'm 41 years out. And it's kind of like that intelligence never sleeps. It's always on. I mean, my gosh, it's just so crazy, you know? And when you look at this and you can, we talk about service and then, you know, even just like lasting purpose, right? You know, giving, doing, loving, and serving, you know, well, you can serve and then you can also give Mm -hmm. and, and they could be together, right? By service, you get an opportunity to give. I kind of hold service more as a, as a, not attitude, but as something that's inside, you know, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. you know, and, but then giving, talk to me about giving. Well, giving, Um, you know, giving is so important because people get the wrong idea about giving. They want to give to get, and that's the wrong way to do it. You give because you love, like, we know, we know that chiropractic works. We know that if they receive the specific chiropractic adjustment that their bodies would actually do better. Yeah. All right. Or not even do better. It would be connected, express more life. Yeah. So when you give that adjustment, it's more of like a heart thing because you're, you're, you want to do the best and you're going to give it, you're going to give that adjustment. It's not more, you don't adjust more. It's that one adjustment that's going to clear their atlas to clear them spiritually, mentally, physically. That's part of giving too. But giving is also like if people are having a hard day, there's, there's things that you could do in your office to give, okay? We give so many things, and it doesn't have to be material things, but I think the biggest thing is love. When you give love, when you give love to people and love a hug, whether it's a hug, whether it's a touch, whether it's just a heart, looking in their eyes, just, just knowing that you are there for them make, is big for healing, big for healing. So start practicing looking in their eyes with your touch, that your touch is not like, you're mad at something and you touch them, they'll feel that. They can feel that vibration. You need to touch these people with love. And when you give that adjustment, it needs to be with love, with the intention, with the power that is within them because they're doing the healing. You're not. You're not giving that healing. You're just releasing, all right? And that's what's giving them the healing with innate from within. It's inside out. But your intention of where you are and what you're feeling, your vibration needs to be in the right place. If it's not in the right place, please don't touch that patient because I'm telling you, they can feel it. They can feel it. So the more you have that loving feeling, we used to push the button on the door. You know, this is like my love button when you come in and that, that I got from one of my mentors. But what you do is 
that is part of the giving. And that's what you give every single day. When you come home, you give 100% at home too. You have your spouse, you have your children, you can give there too. And that's part of giving. It is. It's all about it. The Thanksgiving, we're giving. Absolutely. And it's the giving month, like you said. You know, you talked about... Um, you caught yourself. You said, you know, and they'll do better. You know, when you quit the subluxation and they'll do better. And then you went, actually, they're, they're just, they're, they'll be more connected. It's exactly. really interesting because when people really get this, you know, and people say, well, listen, I, I understand chiropractic, right? Like, you know, I know you own it and I own it, you know, and I know we can own it more on some level, right? Continually, it's a growth process, but it's not about the doing better, you know? It's about the more connection, right? You know, to me, it's not about the correction. It's about the connection, right? The correction exactly. leads to the connection. We had a patient yesterday. You were just saying this. We had a patient yesterday. When I adjusted her, she had to go to the bathroom and throw up. So what had happened is she had taken some whatever medication that the doctor gave her. And she said, I don't like taking medication. And she said, you know, she's the one that said it. And the body, innate intelligence, actually made her throw this stuff up. Yeah. So it's not, you know, that, you know, to her, she was like, well, I'm not doing better. But then when you explain it to them, yes, you are expressing more life now because your body knows. Yeah. It's very it's, smart. It is very smart. And it's crazy because people try to cure things, you know, they try to, you know, fix things. They try to do that. I get it. You know, you got to, someone's got a hot low back, you know, you want to try and make them feel better or do whatever. And that's all that comes out of empathy. It comes out of caring. Um, but the truth is that's not chiropractic as per se, getting people more connected, getting them functioning to the best of their ability. What we miss is we tend to label what it's supposed to look like. Right. We have no idea. I mean, that's not between us and them. Between us and them is the is the interference, right? And if we can correct that, and we don't even do the correction of the interference, we just put the force in, and their body does it. I love what you said. Yeah, Yeah. it's always it's always they get adjusted. They cry, emotion. It's all emotion. You know, they release emotion. You don't know what's going to happen. So it's 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 amazing. It is. It is. It is. So, so, you know, we talked about serving, we talked about giving, let's talk about loving. Ah. So we're doing the four spectrums here, you know, the give, do, love and serve. We're just going out of order on it, but what comes up for you? What's the first thing you think about when you hear the word love? You know, I, I, I actually didn't say this before, but I think one of the things is you need to love yourself first and love life. Because if you love life, then you'll be the great chiropractor, and you are. And what happens is when you love yourself, you you are, there's no barriers, and you can actually give love, and they need to love themselves too. So you, the love in the office makes a big difference, the touch, the hug, everything. But if you love what you do in chiropractic, if you love life, and you love the principle of life, then you will love to be disciplined enough to take care of yourself and to reach as many people as you possibly can. And if you don't want to, that's okay too, but to reach people and to be able to love them. All right. You may not want to like them, but you need to love them because they're like a child of God. And also like, think of that, like a baby, like you're holding a baby, that love that you feel for your own baby or a baby. That's the kind of love you should feel on each patient. So think of them like a baby. They're like a baby. You're nourishing them. You're giving them hope. As you said, you're doing the service, you're doing the adjustment, you're doing all that. You're, you're changing their mindset. You have to let them change, let them master what innate is, what the different type of intelligence is, what not, what chiropractic really should be. That's the love you should have. The love that you reach all these people, infants, it doesn't matter what condition, it doesn't matter how old they are. You got to reach people because the older people, they're the ones that really want the love more because they don't have anybody at home to love. So they want that hug. They want that touch. They want a part of you and they want that hope. And that's what you do. We do also in the orientation too. They see my passion of what I have in chiropractic. See, it's my life. It's not what I do. It's my life. So that's part of it and loving. So if you're, if you're thinking about you're having trouble loving people, then think about yourself and think about what you can do to love yourself and think about how you want to be loved and how they, they can be loved. So. And and it's powerful. It's powerful. You know, 
And you mentioned something, you mentioned about the baby, you know, it's, isn't it amazing that when a newborn or a baby comes in and they're, and they're sleeping or whatever they are, it just draws people to them because yes. they are just pure. They're the pure essence of love, of life. Right. I mean, it's it's really incredible, you know, and you just watch how people just get attracted and they're right there and how you want to. Oh, and they, with the minute they hold that baby, they just their whole being changes. I mean, mm-hmm. and they're right. It's just. And that's what love does, right? Mm-hmm. That's what, Absolutely. you know, but I like what you said, Paul, because you said, doc, that, you know, if, if you can't, don't feel like you can love others, you got to look to love yourself because it's really about, you know, we can't really love others if we don't love ourselves. Can't give it. Can't give love. You, you can't. can't love no, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, um, I tell you, love is probably the most powerful force that we could talk about on the planet today, you know? Mm-hmm. And when you talk about giving and loving and serving, you know, I would say love is that anchor because it's what amplifies all that goes through. I think it's Dr. Sid Williams and Dr. Sigibus. They all talked about that love. You know, it's, it's nothing's bigger than life, but nothing's greater than love. That's right. That's right. So it leaves us with doing. So we did give, we did love, we did serve. Right. And now we're into the do because, you know, there's that old Russian proverb, right? You know, pray to God, but row for the shore, <laughs> you know, cause you got to do something, right. Yeah. You got to make it happen. And when you've right. got that love and you've got that service mentality and you want to give, you got to do. So talk, right. what comes up when you say, when I say do. Well, I just thought about faith without action is dead. So yeah. we've got to be disciplined to do. I mean, you can't just go in your practice, open it up and, or, or if you've been there 20 years, I don't care and say, okay, I'm ready. No, 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 no. You have to, um, we, we were, I was always taught discipline from Dr. Sigabus for fasting, for meditation, for, for just prayer, writing, um, speaking, speaking it, watch your mindset, be careful who you rent the upstairs to right up here, because that makes a big difference in your whole day. So we, we do a lot of these discipline things and doing, you know, you have to do this, do the, the things that action steps 30 days to make it a habit. You have to do this stuff to be disciplined, get up early, whatever it is. You don't have to do everything I say, just pick one or do something for yourself. Like write thank you notes. That's part of it too. I mean, you have to do things in gratitude and do things to get yourself out of that mindset of like, Oh, I'm just going to sit here and people are going to come to me. No, 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 no. You need to reach out to people. You need to, not to get, all right? This is, let me go backtrack. You don't do this to get. You do this to clear yourself clean so you can be a better vessel as a chiropractor to, to allow them to do the healing. So when you're fast and you're clear, you'll be being more intuitive with the adjustment. When you are doing prayer and meditation, you're in that state of love. You're constantly in that state of love and you're doing the affirmations. You're in that state of love and you're going in and you're flowing with people and flowing with people. Your heart is showing and you're hugging them and, and everything. It's like family. It's like family in your office before you know it. I mean, people are healing before they even get on the table. So it's, it's, it's that part of the doing too. It's not just, Oh, I have to do this and I have to do that. And I have to do that. It's not a mechanical thing. Yeah. Yeah. more a spiritual thing, more of a lifelong, you know, this is principle of life yeah. and that's part of it in your family and everything. That's part of it. Yeah. But we have that in every room, walk by faith, not by sight. And you got to do that and you can't do it without doing it. So yeah. and everybody thinks that doing is action, but doing is what's behind the action. Right. And exactly. it's amazing when you look at it, because all four words that we just talked about giving, doing, loving and serving, that's all spiritual. Right. Yes. Yes. Tie them together. <laughs> tie, tie them together for me. OK, so. Lasting purpose. Right. To give, love, serve and do. That's your purpose, your why. And you're. When you say tie it together, all I'm saying is like. It's, this is all part of it to be that successful. You don't have to be to be that chiropractor you want to be. Whatever you want to be, you can be. It's all up in here. But um, lasting purpose is your why. Yeah. Why are you being a chiropractor? What, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for yourself? Or are you doing it for the people? Or are you doing it for life, for people to be, have a better life? 
I mean, who are you doing it for? And how much do you want to give? And how much do you want to do? And how much do you want to serve? How much do you want to be that loving chiropractor? I mean, that's that's the question I'm going to pose to everybody. Instead of me asking me, how much do they want or do you want? I know what I want. And I know what I want to do. And I know how much I can do. So it's it's unlimiting. Innate is unlimiting. There are limitless things that you can do to be that better chiropractor, to tie it all together, to have that lasting purpose. The purpose you go into the office reporting for duty, the purpose of no matter what you do, whether you're in an office, in a school, whatever it is, that's your purpose. And you have to own it. You have to bundle it up, tie it in a knot and keep it there and just always be focused on that. That's how I see it. That's a discipline. I love it. Focus. I love it. I love it. And, you know, I, I think everyone goes through this, you know, so someone's out there watching and, and, you know, you think you're the only one you're not, but, you know, it's like, there's times where you feel like you're going to work, not to serve, not to the office, but there's times when, you know, we get to that space where it's just like, oh my God, I just need a vacation or I just want to do whatever, you know, whatever it is. Right. And it's, it, it's all about, connecting back inside right it's like you know 30 you know 36 years you know and you've been and you and you're still going to the office every monday wednesday and friday you see a lot of people in your office in pompano you're a fixture in your community and everybody knows you and they know that they can come to you and they flock to you and yet you know it's not about getting tired of it it's not about like you know it's when we start feeling like it's work, we got to get back into that serving, giving, doing, loving, you know, that's where we have to go to. When you feel tired, you're doing it physically. Yeah. Don't be the spiritual being just flow through that office. And at the end of the day, write your thank you notes, because that's the part of giving and loving and serving too. Yeah. So that you're sending it out, but you're right. It's, I never feel tired. And I just, I go in early and I stay during lunch. I do all my calls, whatever it is. I just, that's just it. It's my, it's my place of play. Yeah. You know, my happy place, my happy place. <laughs> my happy place. I yes. love it. Take heed of that because that was just a major bomb that just got dropped, you know, because when you are tired, you're doing it physically and it doesn't have to be done physically. Chiropractic and life can be done, you know, on a different plane than just the physical world. Dr. Pollock, let's talk about some of the, some of the people that shaped your life. Like, you know, who are the people that really kind of, kind of change you. Give me, give me the first one. I don't know how many we'll get. Here, first first is my brother, Dr. Armin Rossi. And uh, that's amazing story. Cause I'll, I'll go quickly with that one. I, he was, my ex sister-in-law was graduating at life college and I went to the graduation. My brother was teaching there and um, I heard Dr. Cameron can Sam it. And I said, Oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. I was thinking it, thinking it, thinking it. So at the end of the graduation, my brother brings me up to Dr. Sid Williams. Dr. Sid Williams, being as tall as he is, I don't know, he must have looked seven feet tall by then, but he was really not. But he was like this big guy and he had his hand and he looked at me in my eyes. But then I think he looked at me right here, my third eye, took my hand, shook it and held it. And he said to me, when are you coming up to school? Meaning like I went to college. And it was like this energy came through my arm all the way up to every cell of my being. And on the way home, my plan is just, I'm going to go to chiropractic school. And that's how that started. And that's how my brother kind of, kind of pushed me into, you know, a chiropractic. He always bring me to D even before I went to school there. And he's always been a mentor to mine. I always called him and everything with the office, anything, all the questions and different things. So that's my brother is just like a saint to that. He's just a master. And I've known your brother for many, many years. And I, and one thing that, that I can personally say about Armand Rossi, he's one of the most free, is p- freest people I've met. You know, I mean, he really does walk in faith and he, and he's just this, you know, he just sees things. He, he, em- he exemplifies, you know, when you see it, you can be it, you know, because he, he really does. I mean, he's just this loving, most beautiful person in the world. And and he, anywhere he goes, he just make, he he just goes in different places. He's teaching a life, you know, college. He's, he's teaching I here, he's teaching there. He's doing ICPA, uh, practicing in, in, in Georgia, practicing in, in Arizona, practicing. And it just, and it's just so beautiful. When you look, when you look back at his life, it's going to be like, wow, that guy did so much and 
touched so many people, you know, and uh, and did it his way. That's Absolutely. Being, that's being free. Talk to me about this second. And you still talk to him. How often? Oh, every week. Yeah. Yeah. Every it's week. Like, that was like, good. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. The second, well, Dr. Sid, of course, when I went to DE, yeah. but through DE, I met Dr. Sigifus and he was my mentor and totally. And I, I followed him. I was part of the gatherings He changed my mindset. He changed. He had this vision. He had this vision, always about the vision, about the dream of what he wanted people, chiropractic to be. He wanted this whole vision. And he helped us with the discipline of seeing that vision. Not, you know what? He saw things in us, me, that I didn't see. So he was able to see in people their potential, but we didn't see it. So he would help us see our own potential and to help develop it. So he was really into discipline, um, writing things down, meditation, being accountable, all the things that, you know, your mindset. And that was, Dr. and plus he had love and he had, he had so much about the fourth dimension to see it in spirit world, to bring it to the physical. He was very, very influential. And, and I went with him to Spain. I went, went to Panama. We did all the mission trips. We we went a lot of places and um, it was really, really very, very profound. I, I don't know where I'd be without him in my life. And uh, he was, he was to so many people, so many people. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, good. he was with, so just yeah. we were together um, and Selena was there too. Uh, uh, I invited him to speak and Selena together. It was really cool. They're on the same platform at Cleveland College at an ICA uh, conference that we had there, right? And, and he passed them. He passed the next week, and we all went out to dinner Saturday night, and and um, it was just it was just incredible. And and um, I think he passed the next week, but it was just so beautiful. Yeah, it because was because he bought a plaque for me at the at that seminar that says hundred percent chiropractic," and he right. said to. Pat, I want you to send this to um, Paula. By the time I got it, he had the stroke. Mm. And that's why. And I always have that in my room there to remember that he sent that to me. And I was like 100% chiropractic. Yeah. So. And you know something about, about Dr. Sigafus was, um, and it's really appropriate for us to speak about him today because, yeah, being Veterans Day, today's Veterans Day, for you viewers, you might be seen at a different time. But the most appropriate thing is that the, Dr. Sigafus was so, he loved anything around the service, you know, and, and it was crazy. I'll tell you a quick story. I spoke in Las Vegas. I had about a 40 minute talk. I gave at an upper cervical conference and, and I did it for the college back in this was like 2011. My dad was living in Vegas at the time, my dad and mom. So my dad picks me up at the airport. We go to my talk. I say, dad, you can come in. He goes, no, I'll just stay out here. And I, and, and he, and Jim Singapore was speaking on the same, same platform. And, um, and I introduced them. I was walking around. I saw Jim, I introduced them. They, I couldn't get my dad out of there. I went to have lunch, actually. I went with with uh, with a friend for lunch at the hotel. I said, you guys want to come? And they were just talking, talking, talking. My dad is 95 years old right now. He's a World War II vet and, uh, you know, still drives, still does everything. And him and Jim just talked for hours about it. And when I left, when we left, my dad goes, what a nice guy. You know, I said, Dad, that's like Jim Sigafoos. You know, he's one of the biggest guys in our profession. He goes, well, all I know is he just he just kept asking me questions. And and what a really nice guy, you know, he and the thing about him, kind of what you said, you know, he loved life so much that that it wasn't just chiropractic. It was all these other things that made him who he was, that he could bring his passion to what he you know, to what he did. One more person. Tell me one more person. Um, Dr. Richard J. Santo. He was, uh, you know, I'm going to say a word, which I didn't say before is um, intention. Yeah. His intention and authority when he spoke and that intention, he used to project into everybody. Like he had an urgency to bring chiropractic to the masses yeah. and he would live in Jupiter. He, when he moved down to Jupiter from New Jersey, he would come down to my office, sit in a reception room and just like, amazed amazed and he would like talk to all the paper people the patients whatever you want to call them and he did so much for me on my thinking too like everything technique or whatever we worked on on what we needed to do and discipline on that too 
his intention when he spoke, it's like the whole room, a pin could drop because his intention was really coming from above, down, inside out. There really was. And he started in that legacy. He wanted a legacy. And I guess he didn't realize he had one because he started the band of brothers where people are getting together all over to speak chiropractic on certain nights. And that's where it came from. Yeah, so he all, was, yeah. all over the country. I mean, there's bands of yeah. brothers everywhere, yeah. right? And it's just reconnecting every, is it every month? Every week. Every week. Every, oh, you said every week, and, yeah. yeah. And it got to be where there was a, like a small group of chiropractors because the school had gone or whatever happened. And he was like, I remember this back in the 60s and this is going to go develop again. And he was determined to get everybody back on track with chiropractic. And that's how he was. He's very, very disciplined, very the attention, intent, like poking you in the chest. You know, it's like, yeah, you're going to do this. <laughs> so it was like, you know, those are things that you don't realize that they made a difference in your life until we start talking about it now, until they're gone. And don't wait for people to be gone to make a difference in their life. Love them now. Don't wait. Don't wait. This is so important. Life is beautiful. Yeah. And don't wait. We don't want to be known as a legacy. We want to be known right now to love life and to love people. That's right. And, you know, the truth is, is that they're never gone. You know, if you want to hear, you know, Jim Sigafoos, if you want to hear yeah. Santo, you know, I mean, there's plenty of YouTube uh, videos on these gentlemen and, and, and go out and listen to them. I mean, just you know, don't go out. You can go on your computer or your phone and listen to them, get inspired, you know, and, but not just inspired because inspiration is one thing, but, you know, let them touch your heart, open that up so that you can actually get a change in your life. Cause it's, you know, it, it will happen if you allow it to happen, if you're open to having it happen. And it, it just goes like that. Dr. Paula, yeah. it's so great to have you today. Thank you. It's great Thank to be you. here. I love and appreciate you too. And I love and appreciate you. And it's so wonderful that we can connect, especially on veterans day. It's like, you know, cause we're talking about giving, doing, loving, and serving. You just keep waving that it's, Beautiful. It's beautiful. And to our viewers, thank you. Thank you for being with us. It's not Veterans Day when you catch this because it's got to go to editing and things like that. But but just thank you. Thank you for tuning into life to, to the life leadership, life West leadership line. Thank you for for sharing this message with other people because it's being shared all over the country, all over the world, actually. Uh, close to 4,000 people are watching, a little more than 4,000 are watching it every week. Um, we just appreciate you so much. And um, as long as you want to hear it, we'll keep bringing it because this is a message that should never die. Uh, when we talk about chiropractic, when we talk about life, when we talk about increasing ourselves, our own self-love, as Dr. Paula talked about, just, you know, and do me a favor, keep loving and, and hugging those around you and never forget that the way out is through service. And, um, until we uh, come at you again, uh, just know that we love and appreciate you and have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Mm -hmm.